No chill, no filter. Okay, what's poppin' y'all? This is your big homie MC Ryan Skiz. You can see the setup is a little bit different because on my left and y'all right, I got the beautiful LaVisco. I'm pretty sure y'all know who she is by now. But if you don't, introduce yourself. Baby. So yes, I'm LaVisco, Miss Beauty, the model. So I'm the plus side model that just represents for the 414. Uh, for No Chill, No Filter TV, also the representative. Uh, just coming through. Well, Larry the Bull, who's going to represent himself, coming real soon, right now, actually. That's what's up. That's what's up. And I got my man right here, man. Y'all already know who he is. The man don't really need no introduction, <laughs> but I'm going to let him introduce himself anyway. Tell him who he is, my man. What's up? It's Larry Bull, you know what I'm saying? 414 representative. Say Mercy, THC Brotherhood, you already know. Um, Bill Side Entertainment. For sure. Larry is not real, man. I'm here to make some noise, and we re we here to talk, man. What's up? That's what's happening, man. So, you know what, man? Let me ask you a question. Like, we just going to talk about your very, very first battle, which I have the pleasure and blessing of recording. <laughs> I still got that footage, so I can do what I want to do with it. Right, you know what I'm right, saying? I'm right, an exclusive right. man right now. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Thanks to Great Britain and Say Mercy. Shout out. So, let me ask you a question, man. Man, what was the preparation for that? I mean, is that something that you just came in with? Because when did they call you for that? They called me uh, when I pulled up. It had been about 30 minutes since the phone call. You say this like you finna say a month ago. Like, no, 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 no. <laughs> like a month prior. No, not at all. It, it was about 30 minutes before I pulled up, and everybody was like, is that dude? Is that him coming in? Actually, it was crazy. You know, this might give niggas nightmares, but this is what I was wearing that day. Like, that, the battle's about almost two months now, so this right. is what I was wearing that day. But I was okay. at the crib. I had just dropped my mom's off, man, and I was, you know, it was a regular, normal Saturday. No sure. rap no rap stuff that day, so I was just regular old bull that day. Okay. And um, I was actually about to take a nap. <laughs> It just sounds like I'm just being such a jerk and a, a super nonchalant competitor. But I'm serious. I was in the bed, no cutoff shirt, gym shorts, going to sleep. I'm like, ah, man, we need that time. And the phone rang, and I was like, this is cuz. And he had originally called me, Lil said it originally called me to drop him off at that same event. Okay. And I was just going to go if I was going to drop him off. Come with you. Right, you know right. And I was just going to watch. Right. So when I got the phone call, I'm like, I wonder what he, what he want. And he was like, cuz, you ready to battle? I said, what? What you mean ready to battle? Bro, you got a one rounder? I'm like, for real? So right now, you talking about right, right now. Right, exactly. He's like, we got an out of towner, man. Somebody ducked on him. You need, if you can, go down here. They're looking for an opponent because they want him to not leave empty handed. I said, oh, I'll be on my way. That's what's up. I hung the phone up, threw all my clothes on. I run out the door. I actually ran out the door so fast, I forgot all my stuff. I had to come back in the house. <laughs> Pop's like, where you going? I got a battle. He's like, man, they finna smoke you. No, they're not. I'm ready to go. <laughs> and That's then what's up. The rest was history, man. I showed up. Definitely. Definitely. I was in such a such a, a zone of I can't come out here and get smoked. Like, what, what is, it's crazy because even though this is my first battle, I get held to the standards of a battle rapper yeah, in yeah. my own circle because yeah. nobody, like in my in my homebody circle, not the circle of dudes I do my music with. Shout out to Mike Regal and A.R. Wesley. What's up? But in my just group of you know the homies, they like. Bro, you the man with the bars. If you ain't got no bars, when somebody that we don't know show up with the bars, you look bad to us. And then when they know you since you, you know, kids, there I can't do enough rapping in their eyes. Right, 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 you right. You know what I'm saying? Right, so right. when I even told them that I was interested, they was like, bro, don't get smoked. <laughs> Don't get so that's a bad look, huh? Right, and my whole thing is I don't like losing anyway. Right, right. And, and when it comes to rapping, period, you know, I come from a family of athletes, and I'm the only one who, no track record. I right, did one right. season of football, freshman year, and no basketball history, no peewee, no nothing. Right. Only time I did some sports, baseball, as a peewee. Oh, okay. Got a championship, which was cool, but right. whatever. But I was like, man, this is my thing right here. Dude. And my whole thing is like, I'm not going to let nobody come take this from me. I don't care who you is. This is the only time where no matter how big you is, how small you is, how ugly you look, what you wear. Because if you're saying something better than me, what you wearing don't mean a damn thing. And I was like, okay. And I, you know, me just being a little dude and all that, like, 
This how I get niggas up off me. Hey, man. Big things come in small packages, man. Right, so, right. I mean, but for real, for real, man, I'm sitting up there recording it, and I promise you, when you came with that first bar... Let's get one thing straight. That was one of those things where I thought that you actually wrote for this dude. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, and then, not to mention, man, then you just, then you just start, like, continuously, like... I call cuz, like, hey, I need a body. So let me breeze in, find that nigga who think that he the shit, and for breeze him. I'm sitting up there recording that, but at the same time, I'm like... But they just say this, this is this dude's first battle? Is they serious? Like, is, is he serious? Like, is And then I'm just up there looking, and it got to be, you know what, man, you did, you did a tremendous job, man. You did a fantastic job for that to be not not only your first battle, but an out-of-town battle. Yeah. Now, in dude's defense, he was, he did come to battle a little white dude. Yeah. Not, not, not a cocky little black dude. Right. You know what I'm saying? So... I'm just keeping it all the way 100. You know what I'm saying? He, he, he came to battle, you know what I'm saying? He came to look in the face of somebody who he thought he could intimidate. So in the words of Enes at Summer Madness 2 vs. DNA, Smack set me up, man. <laughs> he set me up. He set me up. Man, you know how it is, man. But you know what, though? Like I, I said, don't give him that pass, though. You know what I'm saying? If you ever see this, I don't give him that pass. You know what I'm saying? When he said it the first time before the battle even started, he was like, yo, you know, I have brought personals off, dude. We as rappers, you know what I'm saying? We not supposed to just not have clips in the chamber. Right, right, and right. And right. that was the whole thing about that. Like, all of that was just, let me get some shit together. Because I told you, Cuz was like, yo, we don't know when you're going to get an opponent. We don't know when somebody going to call you. He was like, I hollered at Art of War. They said they're going to hit you up. The same Mercy thing was like, I said, it was just, hey, you got some shit. We, how, I was like, how long I got to rap for? I, I got about nine minutes in total. So that was right. three rounds. I had about nine minutes in total of rap. And he was like, the limit is six. I like, okay, six, five, whatever. Boom. And I ain't gonna lie, my whole goal was rap until Akbar stopped me. Yeah, because you definitely done that. Because I'm telling you, I'm just like, this dude, my camera started getting hot. I'm like, man, what the? Is he, <laughs> dude, this dude, man, he, he lying. He, this cannot be his first battle. You know what I'm saying? And I'm talking about even your mannerisms, you know, your your performance. It, it wasn't it wasn't like, you know, and I'm like like others. I ain't going to say no names. Yeah. But, you know, I done seen some, man, I'm talking about piss poor performances by guys who done had way, well, you know, this is your first one. So, of course, they had way more battles than you. But, I mean, it's just to a point where... You got a bright future in this game, man, for real. And I, I definitely want to see you do more. You know what I'm saying? So I mean any any in any event, um, who is your next opponent anyway? Uh some dude named Bobo. And I don't mean that as in some dude as in for disrespect, because I respect all opponents, which is why Like Bogey Bobo? Uh his name is just Bobo. <laughs> like that's it. You know, Britt sent me some footage of Bobo. Yeah, Britt sent me some footage. He said it's going to be a three-rounder. You know, okay. I'm already ready for you that. Ready? I'm just going to say, you ready? I was so ready for it that, like I said, I started, you know what I'm saying? Like I said, I got a circle of homeboys who like, bro, you got to be the man. That's what's that up. They even try me. You know, they, they don't rap, but we've been fans and studiers of rap, battle rap, diss tracks, just rap, period, since we was kids. We started watching Smack when it was first time getting on TV. Right. I was watching Fight Club in 2007 and 6 when it was on MTV. Okay. Uh, with satellite dishes and all kind of just, I was always fascinated by the contact sport of rapping. Right, right. Always. Right. That's a man said, contact sport of it. Yeah, and then on top of that, you know, I started in that type of lane first where I was like, I gotta be a bar smith. Yeah. And I had to just recently learn, like, hey, you gotta make some songs, you gotta get some original beats with hooks and bridges and breakdowns and yada, yada, yada. Right, right. And I'm like, oh, so I can't just get on here in three minutes. No, that's it, take that's, that's not gonna work. Okay, well. <laughs> You know what I mean? But once, you know, I found out there was an outlet and a true, you know, opportunity to put it together, I said, I'm going to go back to that because I was also in a space where, like, shout out to Works, man. I'm glad he came and his yeah, opponent sure. ducked him, man. I'm for glad sure. somebody ducked him because right. it gave me a reason, you know, to know, to write differently. Because right. I had been in such a song mode, everybody was, like, you know, clamoring for, like, I ain't got bars like that. And right, I was right. like, wait a minute. Right, right. You got a song. I, don't make me get back in the gym. That was the whole thing. I was like, don't make me get back in the gym, man. Like, I will literally, like, and I don't need an opponent. Like, people ask me all the time if you ever went on SoundCloud and listened to my mixtape Body Bags, which was nothing but this. Right, This right. kind of shit that we doing now in this battle stuff, like, it was nothing but that all up and down the mixtape. That's what's up. If you would have listened to that, you'd have been like, who am I talking to? Right. 
You know, that used to be, always be my thing when I used to bring my tracks home from when I used to record, bring them back to the block. Who you talking to? Nobody. Oh, right. yeah, it just automatically sounds like a diss exactly. track. Exactly. Right. That's and then up. on the other note, you know, I was always somebody who was itching. Like, whenever, <laughs> like, throughout my career as an artist, you know, I used to, you know, I've been in multiple different groups or been with multiple different affiliations. I always seen myself as like how Beans was for rock. Like, anybody right. say anything over here, I'm coming to see you. That's what's up. You know what I'm saying? Especially if I know, like, this dude don't do that, don't worry, I come from this. I got you. Let me get that. You know what okay. I'm saying? It's okay. like, I always like, what's up? Alright. So, you know what? Speaking of which, you okay. just said something about your SoundCloud, man. You got you got an album that you're working on, or is it coming yes, out? Yes, yes, yes. It's done. It's been done. Oh, it's yeah? getting ready to drop. We are in the dropping process, Look, man. talk to the people. Everything we're doing right now, as you see, you know, I'm coming in. I'm just spreading the word. But Levels, August 16th, my first feature-length album. It is my first full body of work. It is a three-year period of the transformation from regular man to artist. It shows you, I call it levels for a reason because I wanted to show that there is levels to being an artist. It's not just rapping, it's not just the image, it's not just being a tough guy. It's, it's a compilation of everything and when you put your projects together, it's like I literally said in my first track, I'm going to show you how to do this right. from start to finish and you will peak the levels, you know what I'm saying? I have messages, I have family things and just personal things that I'm sharing because I know that that's what an album is for. It's supposed to be... We as artists, we're not, we're just vocal people, but we're vocal people who are here to help. Right. You're supposed to be able to help somebody. Like, when right. I put this album out, I won't be surprised if somebody called me or hit me on Instagram and go, Hey, thank you. And I go, what for? And they go, oh, well, this song the got me through this, or this right. got me through that. And I want to go, you're welcome. Right, Because that's how I was helped. Like, everything, like, every album I was listening to while I made the project was an influence, was an inspiration, was an experience for myself that I wanted to share. And so. I wanted to be able to have that magnitude, and that's how you stick around, man. If you just make stuff that has no substance or you make stuff that has nothing in it, it won't get you that far. It'll get you a hot summer. It'll get you a beautiful winter. It'll get you one good season or right. whenever you come out, you know, that, that, that longevity gets cut short because you ain't doing nothing else. Right. You know, I've seen it happen numerous of times. Like, I didn't even, I've been on the scene three years doing shows before I even put out any songs. I put out songs this year. I put out five songs. Okay. And in them five songs, I was like, all right, that's nice. Everybody, oh, woo, woo, clamoring for me. Like, I got no project out. Everybody saying this, saying that, I'm doing this, doing that, or showing you something, but I ain't got no project out. When you say you put them out, you put them out as singles or on Yeah, I put them out as singles. Okay. And everybody was asking, though, I guess because, you know, it was something that they liked. They like, is it going to be on the project? I said, no. I want to make a differentiation. Right. What I do on SoundCloud or what I do for singles is that's where I just, you know, we're making music. We're having fun. I'm creating vibes. That's for you to just take, go work out to or whatever you're going to do with. Right. But with this album, I got something to say. With this album, it's a different writing style. With this album, I'm in a different mindset. Like with the album, honestly, I went J-mode. I drew my hair out. I was out here looking like, <laughs> like man, you know, I'm, I'm an older dude. I'm 25, you know what I'm saying? And we all go like this comes for everybody. Right, I was right. already looking like George Jefferson because I wouldn't cut my hair, man, no lining, <laughs> all that. Like, I was like, nice I'm not, man. for real, that I'm not cutting my hair, I'm not doing nothing until I finish this project. Try sing. Once I was so, finally yeah. done with the whole track list, once I got all the beats, once I got all the raps done, and I did this with no pen, I didn't write it down, it was all mental preparation. So, once I got all that done, then I cut my hair. Uh, then then okay. I went and lined myself up. Then I okay. put the beard back on my face. I cut my beard off before I started my project. I was like, Damn. I had all this before I even started. Cut it off. Well, like you said, levels. Exactly. Levels, levels to everything. And during that time period, you know, I was going through so much, you know, as a trying young man, as you transition into the full blown adult stage. Right. I had to come to grips with a lot of things that I put on pedestals as a kid getting kicked down one by one, one by one, one by one, one by one. You know what I'm saying? Superheroes and family members that I thought would always be there pass away, pass away, right. pass away. Yeah, man. You That's know what I'm saying? Or yeah. the things, you know, the, the things you see on the news and the things you, you hear about happening to people, you go, oh, man, that ain't never happened to me. You know, I'm that special nigga. Yeah. I ain't gonna never happen to me. Yeah. One after another. Everything you wouldn't expect to happen to a brother happens to him. Right. And it's like, how do you deal with that? 
Well, you know, yeah, man, I do some work. That makes honestly, sense. keeping it all the way 100, man, it's a terrible thing, but fortunately, the worst that could happen has happened to me. You know what I'm saying? So, anytime, that, that's the reason why I'm, I'm kind of like hard on my youngsters. You know what I'm saying? I let them know when we talk, man, I don't hold nothing back. That's the reason yeah. why my show is No Chill, No Filter TV, man. If it's some, I fed somebody. Hey, man. <laughs> hey, and you know what? No it chill, is, no filter. The thing is, you need to know, yes. You need to know if I'm offending somebody, it's because I'm telling the truth. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That That's what the truth does. Look at what they did to Jesus Christ. And I'm not trying to, you know, uh, shove no religion down nobody's throat because it's not religion, it's a relationship. And metaphors, so, understand, you know, some yeah. things don't have to be taken for you to understand, to, to follow it, right. but it's, we use it to paint the picture and break it down because it's all we know. Exactly. And see, I don't want nothing to happen to you. Just like people, okay, you, you think just because you wake up in the morning and you put that pistol in your waistband, that guarantees you safe passage out there and back home. It doesn't. That brings more static, man. Either way it goes. There's so many people, man, that, that thought that way, man, and died with it in their hands. You know what I'm saying? So these are things that we, I mean, me, myself, if I talk to a young man, is he going to leave with something? I'm just mm -hmm. glad that, you know, I can have that type of, you know what I'm saying, influence on the youngsters. Right. But I see that in you also. I did my research on you, man, and then I, I looked at the little clips that you did. You did a clip of yourself, and I see how people gravitated towards you. You know what I'm saying? So if you get that proper placement, I know that you will have a great, great run in this in this business, man, whether it be battle rap or just in the regular music business, man. You know what I'm saying? Because... Look, brothers like you, I appreciate because you actually putting forth an effort towards your 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 craft, and that's what I'm yeah. calling it. It's a craft. I can't call it a craft when somebody says. Zoo, 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 zoo. <laughs> exactly. It's not a craft, man. It's just one of those where okay, I'm a rap like dude, so I can get some money. You know what I'm saying? Which is the move now. Everybody goes, let me go. Oh, that's popping. Let me try that real quick. Exactly. And then, you know what I'm saying? I'm out here. Like, I couldn't do that. Like that's why I'm glad that when you listen to everything that's on my SoundCloud now, compared to what you're gonna hear on the project, it'll sound nothing like that. Like that was to be colorful. It right. was to show you, like, hey, I can, I can rap. You got range. That's it. Yeah. All I'm trying to show you is I can rap. Range. Yep. On the project, I'm trying to talk to you. I'm right. Trying to share it with you. I'm trying right. to paint the picture for you. I'm trying to share with you. On the first album, I'm trying to share something with you. Right. I'm trying to share myself. Right. You know what I mean? I came out like the whole transformation of. Myself, even to getting the name Larry Bull, has been incorporated into the project because when I started the project, I had a whole different rap name. Right. So right. My name was J.R. the Spitter initially, which is what, and my exact, that's a battle rap name. Exactly. Like my executive <laughs> producer and my my brother, my producer, the, the man who really was the sensei behind my entire project, Mike Regal, was the one who pointed that out. He was like, oh. J.R. the Spare Dog, like, I'm already eight songs, damn near eight songs in at this point, too, mind right. you. And he's like, dog, you sure you want that to be your name, man? Like, that's a real battle rap name. We need something that's going, that's friendly to everybody. Right, Like, right. only the block could get with that, you know what I'm saying? We got to have something everybody can say. Right. And, you know, he was like, you know, what, you know, what can we think of? And I was stuck. Okay. Super stuck. And then he... Larry Bull and I was like, why does that work? Larry Bird, Larry Legend, even if they say it wrong, it's close. Right, right. And I was like, hmm. And then my real name being Lawrence, you know, Larry is the initial so, short name for it. But right. I was like, man, you don't understand. That put me through so much. I ran away from that name my entire life. Right. Not not the real name in Lawrence, but that Larry moniker, man. I went to a suburban school, first to twelfth grade. I'm telling you, every time I walk into classroom, not only being a minority, just, you know, feeling a certain way about myself, like I need some respect at all times. So, and you read off my name in, on the first day of class, and I'm trying to, you know, make my good impression and be cool and whatever. And you say, Lawrence Ivory, and I go, here. And then you go, mind if I call you Larry? And everybody <laughs> laugh at you. See what I'm saying? The entire classroom laugh at me every year. And I'm like... Like, bro, what? <laughs> so I responded negatively every time because what you said, it made everybody laugh. And I'm like, man, I didn't crack the joke because I'm a class clown too. Right. So I didn't, clack, I didn't crack the joke. You did. Not cool, bro. <laughs> not cool, bro. So I'm the, I'm the doer, not the doe. Right? Like, I, I, wasn't, I wasn't prepared for it neither. Right. Then it got to a point. I remember I got to college. I was like, no, you can't call me Larry, big fella. Don't say that. <laughs> big fella. Right. No, 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 and no. So when he said it, you can imagine what I said. Hell no, nigga! <laughs> Hell no, don't call me. No. I'm like, bro, you don't understand. I even told him the story. And he was like, hey, I mean, you ain't got to do it. And the way I even ended up doing it, man, like, like I said, I was already four five songs in where I'm saying JR, and I even said this is JR the Spitter on, like, some of the first two songs. Right. And, you know, the way I'm making the project, like, I'm chronologically putting every song that I record for a time period 
one after another. Right. So in them three years, every song is literally one after the other in the order that I recorded it, made it, inspired by it, got the beats, everything. For sure. So I'm like, man, and I'm like, if I change my name, you'll miss the whole timeline of it. You know? <laughs> like, what are we doing here, man? Right, right. So, with that being said, man, um, okay, we have the lovely... Um, LaVisco here for a reason, man. Now, you know, there, I'm pretty sure there are women that watch this show also. And I'm pretty sure they probably want to know something about you. So, from a woman's point of view, do you have a question for this man? I just want to know if uh, Mr. Larry the Bull was going to be scared if anybody came and just randomly started battle rapping. What if you, you get so popular at the point where somebody do you feel like... Just pull up on me? Right, and then... Yep, see, this is the kind of things that, uh, like I said, the, the squad be like, bruh, you the nigga with the bars, right. so if we even just meet a nigga who say he do music, you gotta have bars. Right. I always have a Rolodex, man. Like, I learned my lesson, I learned my lesson. Stay prepared. Like, like, I'ma tell you this story, man, we ain't gonna say no names, we just gonna share the story. <laughs> what happened was, man, it was a, ooh, it was a terrible day. Me and the guys go to the YMCA like we usually do on Sundays. And we're playing ball, I'm having a terrible day, terrible game. We play like four hours straight. I can't get a bucket. I'm getting shredded. We losing. They blaming me. And I'm not even the best player out here. They right. just like, you not open. Right. So I'm like, all right, I'm just I quit early. I'm sitting over there with the Kobe face on and I had a damn Kobe jersey on. <laughs> with the towel on my head, just like, damn, fuck, fuck. And one of the dudes that was that I told them about that rap was there. Right. And he was the one who been with us. Busting ass. Right. We go into the steam room, and the first thing they get to talking about is rap. So I'm like, all right, we can have these discussions. But in my mind, for some reason, I felt I it, know. but I did. But I was just like, I'm having a bad day. Right. <laughs> I ain't even. I'm thinking about how can I not be embarrassed on the court again? Right. Not. Let me get these bars together right. to throw around so we can have some rapping in the steam room of all places. <laughs> and, you know, I, we got to talk about, oh, man, if you come for this rapper, boom, boom, then we got to Kendrick. And they was like, bro, ain't nobody ready for Kendrick. I said, bro, you can't treat niggas like that, man. Right. I was like, in my book, it's all about who it is and my ability to rise to the occasion. If I had a chance or if I had been put in a situation where Kendrick was like, yo, he on your ass, okay. We go to the gym. Right. You know, I'm gonna right. get ready for this, and I know what you're capable of doing because I've seen him do it. Right, right. Oh no, that that's something that excites me. Okay. You know what I'm saying? People okay. that I feel like stomp a mud hole in me make me want to go out there and exactly. say, all right, well, let me, like Goku, he'd be like, all right, you the coldest nigga in the universe, and I'm over here on Earth. Let's fight. Right. Simple. Right. All right, let's get it over with. Let's see what's gonna happen. Well, I mean, you know, we can actually, I can, I can actually use a great example for that, man. Like. Um, with Great Britain versus Mr. Mills. Mm -hmm. Mr. Mills definitely brought the best out of that man, for real. It great did. Great it Britain. Did. I'm talking about Great Britain brought one of those performances that, you know, honestly, I followed Great Britain for a long time and I've seen this. Right here. Yeah, I was like, yeah, Ooh, yeah, that was the back. that yeah. was the movement of the day. Yeah, I was like, yeah. that damn near that killed my little spin move. <laughs> so I'm like, he did this. I was like, yeah. no, he didn't. And then he turned it to the good. He had to, I was like, come yeah. on, man. Like yeah. that. Yeah. Was I mean, but the day. when you know that you're up against a beast like that, you have to do that. But that's what going up against beast does. That's just like when I do music. I'm, you need to understand something. If you don't have a good taste in music, you're not gonna. You're probably not gonna have a good career in rap. You know what I'm saying? Your you got to have. Will a, be the, the determiners. You got career. to have a good taste in music. Me myself, if I if I if I do a song, mm -hmm. if I listen to that beat and I'm not comfortable with it physically, not comfortable with it, I'm not. I just can't do it. You know what I'm saying? Put nothing down for you. I can't. Really I just can't do it. Like I mean, when I listen to my, I can listen to my whole CD, whether I like it or not. I like the beat. That's just that. That's the reason why I wrote to it, because yes. I really, really like that beat. So it's just one of those things where it's me, as long as I can vibe to what it is that I'm doing. That's what a lot, look at look at people like, um, look at people like Ludacris, you know what I'm saying? He was a DJ, a yeah. cold DJ, but he had a great taste in music. Same yeah, thing with Pete Diddy. He big beats, he was great at it. It wasn't, wasn't no problem, you know Diddy, what I'm saying? Diddy did music after he started producing and picking beats for Exactly, he, okay. he had a great taste in music, you know what I'm saying? So it's, it's that element that you got to have, man, if you want to actually be one of those people that, 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 that will be successful in, you know what I'm saying, the business. And that's just like with you. Like, of course, if you're going up against somebody once again, I said this a million times, man, because I love this quote from Tyson when he whooped that white boy. Yeah. 
I don't know, I forgot what his name was, but everybody's like, no, you didn't have to do that. And you know, Tyson just getting out, so Tyson was on some look. He's like, y'all think I can hey, fight. <laughs> so, so here it is, though. They like, you didn't have to do that. Tyson had to respond, like, hold on. Do know who I am, you know what I'm saying? And I'll put it to you like this here. I'm going to treat everybody like they're coming to kill me. So if y'all want to sit up there and say all this and y'all can say what y'all want to say, if dude didn't want to get did like that, he shouldn't have laced up. And that's what I was on. And that's the lesson I learned from not being prepared for YMCA. I went in there and I said, we get to talk about Kendrick. And he was like, well, then you got to have verses. The dude was like, you got to have verses on verses on verses on verses on verses right. already if you even come out your mouth and say that. Like right. the moment you say it, you better have a clip ready. <laughs> right, and, I, right. and I'm over here like, man, like if, like you know, what I'm, saying? I'm over here thinking fantasy wise. He's over here thinking like, no, you need to be like this now. Right. Big, so big, he taught big, me big. a lesson because right after that, you know, my man's them, they instigators. They're like, so where the bars at? Basically, like they waiting on like somebody's finna rap. Right. They, they they smelt it. And I'm like, man, I hope this nigga don't rap. Because I know this man, he loves to rap. Right. Whenever we meet new people, I don't care if it's by himself, he's going to rap. He's going to have a clip in the chamber. And he was like, boom. And it didn't even matter if you heard it before, it didn't matter. He was ready to rap. Because right. somebody there don't know that rap. Right. You know what I'm saying? And if right. you respect the mic, you're not going to be like, oh, you rap that. So it don't matter, bro. Bars is bars. And if you got them, you got them. If you don't, you don't. That's what's up. And I'm sitting there like, man. He just kicked the whole rap, and I, I felt like I was back to a corner because I'm like, I could pull out something from the old roller decks, and I'm like, I don't want to pull out no album material because I'm like, it's not tailored for flashing and being, look at me, I'm rapping, right, right, which is right. what I used to have, you know what I'm saying, as a youngin', like, I used to just, man, put a punchline verse here, bars here, bar, and then walk around with those, and then my whole song joins would be over somewhere else, right, and I was like, man... I tell you right now, it's probably the first and last time I walk out with my tail between my legs. <laughs> like for that just to be nothing but him rapping one, you know, one or two verses, and the fact that I didn't say nothing, and then like I'm tell, I can tell like the homies gonna look and go. So, all right, he rapped. Okay, that bull finna <laughs> walk out the steam room and go get some water. <laughs> right, right, it's a wrap on that. And then once we got home, man, listen, when I tell you. I have some of the best friends as far as dudes who not gonna sugarcoat it, no chill, no filter steams. They was like, bruh, why you let the nigga do you like that? And this was days later where I'm thinking it's blown over. Mm -hmm. Like we we get ready to go back to the Y the following weekend. You know, we were like a Tuesday, like, nah, bro, you we ain't let you slide. So you ain't got bars no more, boy. Right. I'm like, what you mean? I was like, bro, if I if I knew I was finna battle or that uh I was looking for niggas to rap at, I'd have came with the clips that I usually come with. Y'all know how I get down, right? I came to move. Right. I had a bad day, I just got shredded. I'm like, man. This thing can't get no worse. And it did with him throwing them bars in my face. Right. Wow. And I was like, I went home. I think I jumped on the phone with Mike. And I was like, dog, this nigga, man. Right. He was like, what? He was like, bro, I think I just got served. Man, fuck that. <laughs> you know, like, I couldn't deal with it because, you know, right. and on top of that, it took me off the high horse. Because my, my home was like right. Hollywood. They was like, you don't got bars no more. You make good songs. That's all yeah. you're going to be is right. a song maker. Niggas learn how to make hits and forget how to rap. I said, oh. Right. <laughs> Because if anybody, and that's true though, they do do that. Because if anybody who personally knows me, and like I said earlier, I came from the battle culture. Right. I, I got interested in starting to finally pin raps. I'd always been a fan of rap. You know, my family kept music. My mom was a hip hop connoisseur, bringing in all kind of West Coast music when it came out in the 90s, 90s baby. Right. So I had all that. You know, I heard it all. You know, Bone Thugs is the first tape I ever got as a right. kid. Right. All that. So I'm like, man, rap was nothing. It was once I started seeing the beef DVDs by Quincy Jones and them. Right, right. And I was like, wow. This battle shit is for me. Wow. I was just competing. Yeah. It was competing. Ooh, I love that. Right. You know what I'm saying? This is something I think I can win in, and I like winning. Right. So, boom. I started writing battle verses out the gate. And, you know, I put that aside because I was like, I got to put dude in the closet. The, the angry battle rapper nigga put him over here. <laughs> right. And let me focus on being Larry Bull. And I'm like, I'm not, you know what I'm saying? Unless it's the time for it, then I'm going to pull it out. And it was like, nah, bro. We in the era now where bars is back, bro. Yeah. The bars is back, so you yeah. have to be on that at all times. And I was like, all right. I went home. It had nothing to do with nothing. I'm just, I even went back to, you know, I had to, you know, go back into my old ways of creating. Like, I started out freestyling. Then I learned, like, oh, we're supposed to write it down. 
I didn't know it was until I seen the movie The Art of the Sixteen. Notice how I'm dropping these movies that'll teach you and help you learn some things about the culture of hip hop. Sure. The Art of the Sixteen, and I was like, wait, okay, so you write it down? And I got the writing, so I even went back to it. Whenever I have writer's block or I feel like I'm trash, I pick up something and I write it down. So I got back to writing, and I was like, man, fuck that. I went mean, I mean, and start downloading beats, no original. So, like, man, give me some stuff from the 80s, 90s. <laughs> give, me the, give me that stuff that they go to Funk Flex with. Oh, that's why you call. And I was like, mm. Research time. Yeah, that's you know why you call. I, I jumped back to that. Huh, 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 huh. And I just started practicing, learning it, learning it, rap it. Put the pad down, wrap it off the dome. And then once you get that, Rolodex the bars you know you got already down right. packed. And I just, mm, 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 mm. And once I got to this certain, this certain physical feeling, I feel like once it's, you see the sweat dripping, or right, right. once I'm not, I'm looking past you or looking through you, right. or once I actually get loud or I'm angry, like that's when I know I've hit this point where it's like, don't touch me, move for the next, I don't know how long this is going to last, mode. but right. I am on fire, bro. Yeah, it it happened mode. in the battle. Like the first, once, once he fell for the handshake move, and I got to like that little cadence right there. That's when I, I physically was like, I'm comfortable now. Up until that point, y'all thought, he's going out the gate comfortable. No, nervous mm -hmm. as shit. <laughs> nervous as one, ooh, wasn't enough for me. And once everybody was, ah, and I'm getting pushed forward and yeah, snatched back and forth. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And if you notice, like once I snatched away like that, yeah. oh, no, I, I, was ready to, I was ready to rap then. Well, you know what? I got a question, man, before we wrap this situation up, man. I mean, unless you got, because you got a lot to say, and I'm appreciating that. <laughs> hey, give me the content. I'm cool, I'm cool on that. Well, just, just to close out the story so they don't be like, what happened? Hey, I went and did all that huffing and puffing at the crib for about a week straight. And the following week, I was like, bro, you know, you know, you ever had those moments where, where God sets you up to do it again? Just because you yeah. were so focused on it? So I was so mad about, about my man's doing that to me like that that Redemption. I was like, Exactly. I was like, mm -hmm. I swear to God, if I get a chance <laughs> again, bro, and we gotta just rap. I'm not rapping at niggas, but I'm gonna have clips. So right. the steam room gonna heat up. So we go. We have another day. He come in again, but it was like I was really moral. Like I, like the moment I seen him, basketball didn't matter no more. Right. Cause we came in, we hooping. I'm like, I was good, big baby. <laughs> but in here, I'm like, you dead. Mm -hmm. You're a dead man. <laughs> Mad, piping mad, so boom, we hooping, boom, hooping done, steam room. The homie, I went in there first by myself, it's just me and him sitting, you know what I'm saying, we just talking. The homies come in, I get quiet, I just sit back. He say something, he like, he's like, oh, it's, it's second week, man, where them bars at, bro, you said you ready for Kendrick, and before he could finish, I was, boom, took off, rap, rap. I'll be gay. <laughs> it got to a point like, and this, and this is when I knew I was mentally on point. When I start to antagonize somebody, right? Like, I'm right. not a trash talker during a game or leading up to anything, because uh, I've always been one who I would trash talk and it would just fuck me up. Like just because I'm talking about my last win, I'm thinking I'm gonna do that to you too. Right, no, right. it's never. I learned my lesson. No, exactly. So I was like, all right, and I had something more to prove. To mostly to, to my homies, like bro, don't y'all ever disrespect me like that. And y'all supposed to be the day ones. Don't right. and I and they made sure to disrespect me to my face. <laughs> right. To put me in this zone. They did it on purpose. They know what they was doing. But I was like, how dare y'all think I can't rap? Right, right. You know what I'm saying? And then like I said, it got to a point where I'm just like, Yeah, where you at? And we we ended up going for at least an hour in the steam room. So just imagine I told you, I work my own self into a sweat. Right. So we in a place that's inducing the sweat, and I'm yeah. pacing back and forth, back and forth, back so and forth. You about to pass out. Nigga, I walk out, go get some water, <laughs> dehydrate, come yeah. right back in. It got to a point we started pulling it out of each other. After about the third, you know, the third trade in the verses, three verses in a piece, it was. We go out for the wall. He's like, no, I'll bring your ass back in here. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> see, now he, yeah, exactly. You see what I'm yeah, saying? I'm boxing. Now he ready to fight. Right, right. Now we go in there. Boom. Now we change the topics. Oh, you want some real shit? We don't want no bars no more. Boom, 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 boom. Haymaker, blow after blow. Then it just got to a point where we was just like, roll the decks out. Right. Once it was, it was like, all right, now can we get in the showers now? We was right, in for like right. an hour, bro. Just rap. Right, it's a wrap. You know what right. I'm saying? Okay. The shout outs to dude, man, because that's one nigga, like I said, he's always out here on this shit too, man. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave you with a tidbit, man. Um, you got to look at battle rap just like you look at boxing. Well, you know what? I can I can best explain it as chess. Okay. Just because she can beat you in chess and I can beat her in chess don't mean that I can beat you. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? So just because she can beat you in chess and I can beat her don't mean I can beat you. Exactly. Because either way it goes, you're going to have that, you're going to have that, that, 
that different mentality. Either way it go. When you sit down, maybe it's just certain moves that she doing that you just can't get with. Yeah. I ain't, I don't know those moves, but she don't know mine. So our our what what we do is, you know what I'm saying? When we when our when our minds clash, when our minds clash, it's just one of those things where okay, damn, he keep doing that. Damn, I didn't see that. But right. you might see that and be like, oh man, yeah, I see that. But she wasn't doing that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So with that being said, man, brother, in this game, man, the bottom bottom line is remember that. And stay home. Don't get thirsty. Oh yeah, man. Just remember, man. The, the water my, come, water come with the meal. You know what I'm my saying? My whole thing is I've seen what happened to all of my favorite battle rappers from clips. Uh, first of all, I'm gonna just tell y'all who I study and who I look up to as far as just the battle culture. We ain't gonna put rappers in just battle dudes. Clips, Lux, Shine, Tay Rock, Shotgun, Shub, Briz, Rostein, Ill Will, Conceited. Uh, Rex in his early days before 2013 when he ran into clips. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. You know what I'm saying? Mook before he just stopped completely. Iron Solomon before Mook smoked him. Right. Uh, Ness before he got smoked by Solomon. You know, <laughs> just you know, just a lot of different varieties of dudes as you see. But I've all I've seen them all go through this moment where they go. Oh, and DNA. Shout out DNA, man. He just he man. just he don't not smoke niggas. Yeah, that's my man. He always come to fight. Even oh, if yeah. you beat him, he come to fight. Yeah. And if you don't come to fight, he gonna beat it's you. It's a rap. Yeah, it's definitely a rap. But uh, you know, I learned like watching these dudes all either have not fall off, period, and they still on that, or run into brick walls that shouldn't have been there. Right. Like, I watched clips get smoked by Rum Nitty because he just wasn't interested. Right. Meanwhile, Rum Nitty, I'm like, bro, he's throwing haymakers at you. <laughs> you just standing there. Every two lines is. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, what the fuck? It's a duck one of them. You my favorite nigga, don't do this. <laughs> it's a duck one of them. Duck, he, duck one of them. Because he don't care. Right. You know what I'm saying? Or he off that. Right. Uh, right. I've seen K Sean go, oh man, it, Big T wasn't important to me at Known 3, or I, I thought I could just prepare last minute because the last five niggas I smoked that way. Right. And I'm like, I can't never be underprepared. I'd rather be overprepared. I can't not treat somebody, a, a walking dude on the street. I got to treat him like that's fucking Loaded Lux. I don't care. Right. Everybody is Loaded Lux to me. Everybody's right. K Sean to me. Everybody is the coldest nigga, whoever the coldest battle rapper in your eyes is. That's who every opponent has to be, or I'm not going to do it. And that's how you got to treat And I'm not a dummy neither. If I know I can stomp a mud hole out of somebody without even preparing personals or just preparing something where it's like, this won't work, I have to try this, or I have to come with a game plan no matter what it might be, right. I won't even do it. I won't even talk crazy. I won't look their way. I won't smile. I won't smirk. I'll just give you your pounds and get out the way. Right. If it won't make me wake up and come fight, I don't want to fight. That's a wrap. Okay. That's What's the smartest up? thing you can do because, like I said, these dudes was taking opponents that they didn't want. Whereas right. putting a hit list together is something that'll motivate you. Right. You know what I'm saying? I watched Tay Rock put a whole hit list together, and for two years straight, he got every nigga on the hit list, and every battle was a classic. Right. It was either a classic or a body. You know right. what I'm saying? Like he wanted DNA, and he went out there and he summer madness for summer slam that nigga. <laughs> right. The one time, and that, and, and that was the moment that I respected Rock, because up until that point, I was like, Rock just getting niggas whack. Right, right. I was like, Rock is better than all these niggas, even though I don't even like his style. He's fucking you niggas up. Right. DNA, I just watched what he did to Ness, and Ness was one of my favorite dudes because of his legendary status. Right. I watched DNA shoot the hole through that nigga and then pr c proceed to go through niggas like Disaster, all freestyle, and just go through niggas after that. And I'm like, ain't no way this nigga Tay Rock is finna beat these bars. You shoot gun bars and talk trap shit. He just rap on niggas. Right. And he went in there and turned the whole crowd against DNA. Right. Even the get the smack the fuck out of here, that mm -hmm. didn't even work. It made Smack dislike the nigga for that battle. Wow. That's how bad it was. Any angle of that he was throwing, boo. DNA got booed. Wow. That's crazy. Me <laughs> I was just gonna say, man, you know, we don't want to go too far off the subject because we talking about Larry Bull. It was about to get real. Yeah. So, hey, um, hey, battle culture, man, rap just excites me so, to talk, man. You know that's what? We we gonna have we gonna have to have our own little segment about, you know, because I see you know a whole lot about it. So yeah. it, it ain't gonna be a debate. It'll just be one of those type of lecture type things, like, hey, this is this and that is that. It'll be kind of like right. one of those. Get a round you know table. I, I, oh I'll, yeah, I'll, most definitely. I don't stay far, so I'm always willing to come back. That's what I'm talking about. So, but before we wrap it up, though, man, I just need to ask. The name, Larry Bull, but the other, what you got tagged to it. What, what okay. is that? 
Larry's not real. That is. Okay. What, what, what um, is that about? Let's let's make it. Just, just well, give me a synopsis on that. Real Larry's fast. not real is was created in the middle of the night while I was on Twitter, and I saw the hashtag for some singer from some Australian or boy band or some crazy, but whatever it was, I guess the dude that left the group, and it was like Larry's not real. And I saw that, but I was thinking about making sure that I don't get caught up in the the fantasy that is this rapper ego that I've created, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Because you see people fall victim to their personas. Like right. Tupac became a victim to the thug life persona and it took him out. Right. Or people just fall off. And I said, if I create this dude that is Larry Bull, I want him to be everything that I don't do, or everything that I am not, or everything that's like that is not the family person or the nigga that everybody knows that sleeps in my house and eats food with me. Like there's a difference. Like this nigga is different. That is somebody who's here to entertain, he's boisterous, he's egotistical, he'll talk trash, he'll take on opponents, he'll shoot niggas down, right. he, you know what I'm saying, he knows the difference between God and the block, but he's on the block and with God at the same time, whereas this nigga over here is level-headed dude, he went to school, let alone in the suburbs, you know what I'm saying, and has a... You know what I'm saying? It's a regular life, do regular shit, got little siblings and nieces and nephews that he look out for. He's it's a family God. man. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, and I don't blend the two. You right. know what I'm saying? What I do at home, I do at home. When it's time to go rap, that's when you see me go put on the cool <laughs> stuff. Like, I don't, you know what I'm saying? I don't get dressed up every day. Right, Unless right. it's time to go beat Larry Bull, that's when I go put on mm -hmm. my good clothes. Like, the, the blue Bull. shirt, the hat, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> the chain and all that cool stuff, glasses, whatever right. you may see me in. I get it specifically for that dude right there. The dude you see in the pictures, that's Larry Bull. So you got that alter ego, like. Exactly, and the, and the Larry is not there. real thing is like my way to separate myself, but it also makes people, it, may, it gives the character its own its own living life as well. Because okay. Larry Bull, you can all say Larry's not real, and then the whole thing that I do, it's a show, it's a show gimmick. Whenever I go to my shows and I say, you know what I'm saying? It gets everybody in tune. I'll be like, Larry Bull, they say, is not real. Larry Bull is not real. And then I usually take it and I'll flip it on them. Like something I might say, like what the first show I ever did it at, I was like, oh, I ain't real? Drop the beat. We've been show showing while I'm real. And the next song will be nothing but a bunch of rap, rap. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? I get the flinging bars or I cut the beat off and I rap I acapella and, you know what I'm saying? And do all little other stuff outside of just performing songs and standing there. Right. You know what I'm saying? It gives me the freedom to do all of the, the weird, goofy, you know, childlike things as an inner kid that I always got. have. You know? Have fun with you. Put it over there. You know okay, what I'm saying? No, okay, no chill, no filter TV. Now y'all see why Larry is not real. So, hey, check this out. I had a great time with my man, and then I had the lovely hostess here, um, co-host, should I say. Tell them who he is again. Yeah, so once again, while we in this, it's LaVisco, Miss Beauty, the plus size model. And in this no chill, no filter segment with Larry the Fool. Most definitely, most definitely. So check this out. We're going to wrap it up, man. If you got any shout-outs you want to give, man, let them have it right okay. now. Well, first off, we just going to go right down the line. Shout-outs to my main mans, like I said, the sensei, the big bro, Mike Regal, uh, the, the family, because I had all family work on the project. Mike and Ike, you know what I'm saying? Shout-out to Matias. That's all my producers. Shout-out to Charlie Cooks, my engineer. Um, Shout-out to... Lotus Valentine, my photo my photographer. Uh, shout out to 31st Street, 3100, Bill Side. I see you forever in my heart. Uh, shout out to Zach B, C Mills, um, and basically everybody who fuck with me, man. And shout out to all y'all, man. We do this together, and I do this for y'all, and we do this as a unit. That's what's up, man. That's what's up. I mean, so like I said, man, I'm glad to have you down here, brother. I see you's a very bright man, and you got a very bright future. Once again, y'all was in tune into another. Actually, I feel this is a special edition because it's a different setup. Oh, wait, hold um, on. Shout out Great Brit, Say Mercy. Oh, yeah, for uh, sure. Dream Gotti, the fine rich. Get that. Come cop that. You already know what I'm saying. Right here, it's on the front. Sorry if I added to the back, but it's, uh, it's for the Steve. Sure. Shout out all of them, man. Shout out uh, A.R. Wesley. That's the man. I can't forget you. Sean Smart. All that, man. Woo! That's what's up. That's what's up. Okay, so we're going to wrap this edition up. No Chill, No Filter TV, a.k.a. No Chill, No Feelings TV. So if you're in them, you can stay in them. Because for real, for real, we don't care about that around here. So until next time, you can stay upset. Mm -hmm.